Today is October 21st, 2024. We're starting a new week and there are only two weeks left until the elections. We're entering a period of high volatility in the American stock market and we've come in very strong. As you can see, the S&P 500 has been rising for the last six weeks. The Dow Jones closed at a record high on Friday. The Nasdaq is also continuing to climb upwards to set new records. Let me tell you something interesting about the S&P 500. It has been rising for the last six weeks. This kind of six-week continuous rise has only happened seven times in the past 75 years, and it happened during months we believed the markets would be tough. Honestly, I'm not even worried about October. Even if I look back at September, the S&P 500 continues to climb. But now we're getting closer to election weeks. If we look at the poll results and betting odds in America, it seems like Trump is ahead and the market is pricing this in. I had shared a voice note with our Discord members about this and explained it in detail, but now we are entering election weeks and things can obviously change. Another positive development was the broadening of last week's rally. The financial sector largely participated in the rally. Very good earnings reports came from the financial sector, including JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of New York Mellon. They all continued to climb upwards. Later, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup also joined this climb. The rise of the financial sector is generally a positive sign for the markets because it acts like a barometer for the market. The market fears any troubles there, and there are indeed things to be concerned about regarding the financial markets. I will leave a voice note about it today for our dear Discord members, because when we look at it, America's borrowing is heading in a really dangerous direction. Banks hold a large amount of us treasury paper in their balance sheets at very low interest rates, and against all this, an investor I highly respect, Rocker Miller, he has shorted us treasury bonds. I will share what this means with the Discord members today. Meanwhile, the earnings season has picked up pace. Important earnings reports are coming this week, and so far, the trend in earnings has been positive. Analysts believe that the stellar year will see earnings growth of over 18%. The situation with small stocks isn't as bright, yet we're talking about 1.8%. But if there's no recession next year, if Trump wins the elections, and if interest rate cuts continue, the growth in small companies could also reach double digits. That's why some investors are showing a strong interest in small cap stocks. Not really for me either. Honestly, I'm still sticking with tech companies. Last week's economic data showed signs that the markets will continue to do well. There's still no sign of economic weakening. Retail sales were good, unemployment claims were good. Manufacturing is a bit problematic, there's trouble on that front, but other than that, the data continues to come in strong. In my opinion, the only problem America has right now is the significant borrowing on treasury bonds. As I mentioned, we will note this in a voice memo. If you haven't become a member of the DISC yet, the link is in the description below. Just click on it and you'll become a member. After that, it's easy. This week, a lot of earnings reports are coming in. Of course, the most important one is which? It will come on October 25th. The Tesla balance sheet is the most debated one. Actually, we don't have many questions on the numerical side of the balance sheet because we know how many cars Tesla sold. We know how many batteries they sold. The only thing we don't know is how much discount they gave. What was the gross margin like? They also sell emission credits. We don't know about that. Other than that, we're very knowledgeable. The main issue is what Elon Musk will say because his statements on V-Robot Day were very limited. There are, of course, many rumors about this. For instance, someone got sick that day. We know this. Elon Musk had tweeted about it. We are running late. Someone got sick in the crowd. This delay, however, was also due to the Hollywood studio where the shoot was taking place not being very accommodating and saying, finish this tonight, we have a shoot tomorrow. Because of this, there's a rumor that Musk cut his speech short. How true this is, we don't know. But in any case, we expect more explanations from Elon Musk in this conference call. Where are they in terms of autonomous driving? What do the safety data tell us? How is the progress on the semi-truck? How are the sales of the cyber truck going? Will there be an economically steered car in the future? There are many unknowns and people are genuinely curious about these. If Musk makes statements on these topics, it could benefit the stock. If the explanations are few or not well received, the stock could drop even further. On the other hand, the election also has a significant impact on the test list. Because Elon Musk is no longer just supporting Trump, he is attending Trump's rallies, giving speeches and trying to persuade voters one-on-one. -on -one. He is extremely biased. Because of this, Musk himself mentioned what could happen if Trump is not elected. Let me not say it. He cursed himself. We will be with our dear Discord members that day. Before the earnings report, we will discuss both our earnings predictions and our predictions about the stock movement. If you haven't joined yet, it's beneficial to do so. It's not just Tesla's earnings. Next week, General Motors is coming up. I'm curious about October 24th as well, because the automotive sector is generally declining. 
However, General Motors has shown a quite positive trend in its stock movement this year. Let's see what happens in terms of ethical tools. I'm very curious. For those interested in the defense industry, G Aerospace reports on October 24th and Lockheed Martin on October 25th. Lately, it seems like the US is spending a lot on the military. We'll see how this reflects in their earnings reports. An old but important company, IBM is reporting its earnings on October 25th. You know, established players like Dell and Oracle have delivered some very good surprises. I'm curious if something similar will happen with IBM. I'll be closely watching developments in cloud computing and artificial intelligence. Also, what are they doing in quantum computing? As you know, they have significant investments in the school. On October 25th, there's another server exam report. ServiceNow is a software service company. These types of companies have taken a big hit. With the AI revolution, will there be a recovery there? We're curious about that. Boeing's report is coming. It's a company surrounded by a lot of rumors on October 25th. As you know, the management has changed. They are laying off a lot of employees. I'm curious to see how this will develop. Additionally, there are two important earnings reports related to the artificial intelligence and microchip sectors, Texas Instruments and LAM Research. You can consider LAM Research as a competitor to ESM. Not exactly, but let's frame it that way. They are reporting earnings on October 24th. This will impact how the AI sector is doing. It's also worth talking a bit about crypto. At the time of making this video, it has surpassed the 69,000 level. Bitcoin reaching this level for the first time in a long while is extremely encouraging. In my quantfu portfolio besides Bitcoin, I also have a bit of Cardano right now. I'm making a short-term confirmation. This is not investment advice. I don't fully know what I'm doing in these matters. But I thought the CEO of Cardano has worked incredibly hard throughout this bear market. It seems to me that we might see the results of those efforts. So I'm going to try a bit. Right now, there's a small profit. I'm playing with a small amount. To keep up with crypto news, Quad Fury has a section called The News. I watch that. As you can see here, there are very informative updates. Some are analyst reports, new technology news, and changes in some cryptos. For example, you might have heard that XRP is possibly launching a new stablecoin. The CEO says it could be a $159 billion market. I like reading data like this. From what I can see, most people think the main direction of Bitcoin will be up, but there could be some downward corrections. As long as the money supply in America continues to increase and the likelihood of the issues I mentioned earlier with treasury bonds grows, Bitcoin and of course gold, which we can call the physical counterpart of Bitcoin, will be affected. I don't think the outlook is too bad. This week, the flow of macroeconomic data in the markets will be somewhat limited. On October 23rd, Wednesday, the existing home sales report for September will be released. Last week, the mortgage sales report came out. It seemed bad for small homes, but good for large homes. Actually, selling through a mortgage is very difficult in America right now because the Fed lowered interest rates, but the yields on treasury bonds increased. Due to the issues I mentioned, mortgage loans have also become more expensive. The durable goods orders report for September is coming. On October 25th, it will provide data on how the economy is doing and the state of consumers. Also, on October 25th, the University of Michigan's Consumer Sentiment Index will be released. This is important because it shows how consumers feel about the economy. We see inflation expectations. It gives clues about whether America is in a recession or not. But primarily, this week we will be focusing more on earnings reports. I wish you a great week. It's time to be cautious. We're approaching the elections. I'm long right now with around 120 in cash. I have my hedges as always. These are somewhat critical weeks. Generally, the last week before the election, the markets have been in the red. So next week, but this year, everything is unfolding so differently than expected that perhaps we shouldn't use the past as a guide for ourselves.